Hello there, welcome to PeopleSoft channel, the place where you can learn, explore and master everything about PeopleSoft. I am Siva Koya, creator of this channel. Today I am very excited to introduce you advanced file layout configuration options. By the end of this episode, you will learn how to deal with various file formats and use file layout to optimize your work. I will also cover some of the lessons I learned with file layout so that you can cut to the chase without wasting any time. So stay tuned. Before we get into today's topic, let's do a quick recap of what we learned in the previous episode. We learned about file layout and how to use it to load data from a file into one or more PeopleSoft tables. We did some hands-on exercises to practice this skill. If you didn't watch my previous episode, I would recommend to watch that episode before continuing further as I will be building on the same code line in this episode. If you already watched my previous episode, without any delay, let's get started. File layout has some advanced configuration options that makes our life easier. Let's explore these options one by one. This is the standard format we used in the previous episode. But what if file data comes from third party application in this specific format. In this format, each field value is enclosed by double quotes. Now let's see how we can read this file into PeopleSoft application using a file layout without touching the code. I'll navigate to my app designer. This is the file layout definition that we created in my previous episode to insert file data into multiple PeopleSoft records. I will double click on the file record definition. Here we can see a file layout option called default qualifier which is specifically provided to us to handle these kind of scenarios. In our case default qualifier is double quotes. What it means is each field value within the file should start with default qualifier and end with default qualifier. If there is no value here basically it means there is no qualifier for file field value. I will click OK. I will also update the default qualifier for my second record. I will click OK. Now I will double click on file layout definition, navigate to use tab. By default qualifier is optional. That's the reason we were able to load file data in our previous exercises without any qualifier. I will uncheck this to make qualifier required for this exercise. I'll click OK and save my changes. Let's try to load the file data. Let me quickly navigate to my SQL developer. I see there is some data already in these tables. I'll quickly delete the data. Now I'll go ahead and open the App Engine program that we created in my previous episode. Like I said, we are not going to touch the code. I will go ahead and run the program. Let's assume the program ran to success and let's re-query the tables. Now the data is loaded as expected. File layouts default qualifier configuration option has a quirky feature where file layout ignores any text that is appended or prepended before or after default qualifier. Let's give it a try. So this is the same file that we loaded before. Let's add some text here and let's add some text after. Likewise, you can try on any field. As you can see, I have added some junk data before and after default qualifier. I'll save my file. Before loading this file data, let me quickly go ahead and delete the data in existing tables. So now I'll go ahead and delete the data that we loaded. All right, so now I commit my deletion. Now I'll go ahead and run the same program again but this time we are loading the new file. Now I'll go back and re-query the table data. As you can see, file layout simply ignored the junk data before and after the default qualifier. Now let's explore loading another variation of file data using file layout. 
as you can see even though the file extension is csv file format the field values are separated by semicolon instead of comma the value that separates two field values is called field delimiter in file layout terminology now let's see how to load this file data by tweaking our file layout configuration option without touching the code here is our file layout let me open our file layout record definition this is where we can specify a field delimiter for our file record file layout supports comma semicolon tab space if we wish to use any other delimiter we have to select other and then provide the field delimiter for example pipe for this exercise let's use semicolon i'll click ok i'll do the same change to our second record as simple as that let me go ahead and save my changes let me delete the existing data in the tables now we will rerun the same program let's run the query again as expected file data was successfully loaded into our peoplesoft application there may be times when third party applications send more than required information in the file to our peoplesoft application in such cases do you know how to ignore some specific field values from the file before loading file data into our peoplesoft records if you are not sure let me walk you through a solution before we proceed keep in mind each field value inside the file should be mapped to file layout record field specifically when the file format type is csv it doesn't work the same for all file formats especially in case of xml the additional fields will be automatically ignored let's go through a quick example let's assume this is the file data sent to us by a third party application 001 record contains employee information we have employee id first name last name and email address for the sake of this demo let's assume third party application is sending an additional field value that people soft don't need in this case is the employee us citizen or not if we take a look at our people soft record you can see that in our people soft table we are not storing that additional field value but if you want to load this file data using file layout you have to map each field value in the file with our file layout structure good news is we can add an additional field in the file layout structure even though that field doesn't exist in our people soft record i will go ahead and add an additional file field by clicking insert file field let's give a name to our file field i'll give a length of 1 i'll click okay and i'll save my changes now let's navigate to preview tab to view how file layout is capturing the data i'll navigate to preview tab click on the refresh button let's select employee header information as you can see the additional field value is captured exactly as we wanted now let's go ahead and run the file import process before loading let me delete the existing data again we are not making any changes to the import logic we are just running the program let's assume the program ran to success and if we select our data the data is loaded without any issues as expected the additional field value is not captured in our record if you are wondering how our import logic is ignoring the additional field value let's navigate to the program and people code and if you see this function copy fields to record when it is reading the data from the file it is only copying the like named field values from the specific file record to the peoplesoft record if a file record field value doesn't exist in peoplesoft record it is not going to copy that value that's exactly what copy fields to method does a lot of times i noticed the changes i made to the file layout are not saved properly i would recommend always after making the changes close the existing instance of file layout reopen the file layout and ensure your changes are saved to the database before running the import program you will save yourself a lot of headache even though file layout supports parent child hierarchy i didn't see it working in case of 
file layout with CSV file format when trying to import file data from third-party application. Instead of creating file layout with parent-child hierarchy as you see here, in order for import logic to work, I had to create file layout with multiple records as siblings instead of parent-child hierarchy. If you happen to know the solution, please share it here. It will be very helpful for me and for others who are watching this video. That's it for today guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, please consider liking and sharing it so that others can benefit as well. I hope to see you in my next episode. Until then, keep learning.